goodness. Hi, everybody. I'm Linda Dano. And I'm Dee Kelly. Welcome to Attitudes. Well, you guys all know we're doing a whole series this week on what's hot. <laughs> Do you know what What's that means? In, What's think, in the latest names? There's something whatever, incongruous everything. about this. What's yeah. hot? What's hot? Snowboard. Snowboard is hot. Snowboards are hot. You know all the people you see skiing this winter? You'll be seeing a thing called snowboard. Now, we have a, we have a picture of it or a little That's piece right. of film showing what it is so you all know. Let's take a look. Over here. Hello. There you are. Oh, that certainly looks like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, God. But it's not covering the right place that you're no. riding on. I don't think he means to land <laughs> right. on you know what. Yeah, but Snowboarding is, snowboard. is in and hot yeah. for the winter. And um, if you haven't seen our What's Hot series, we've done everything from baby's names to what car is in to what food is in yeah. to everything. And it's, uh, everything. it's been a Men lot of fun. and women. It has been fun to learn all of this. It is. Yeah. And it's also been fun for me to learn a lot about Linda Dano, the lady who discovered Linda, oh. Nina Blanchard, the modeling agent and the famous modeling agent, is with us today. Yeah. And uh, we've gotten some wonderful photographs of Linda oh, during her modeling yeah. days. Yeah. Nina Blanchard is the gal that uh, discovered Linda Peck, which was your name. That was my stage name. Before yeah. Dano. Yeah. And uh, she's going to be here, and I'm going to interview the both of them. So yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. And Geraldine Ferraro's son is here, John. Zaccaro and his new ravel ravioli store. We're having a great day. A great We've day. We've pulled down the steps. I've been told I can eat my way from one end of the studio to the other. Aren't and, you jealous? And they have vegetarian ravioli? Yeah. Too. Oh, they have everything. Wait, colors? And, oh, what do you say? Oh, great. What do you say? Well, well, on our ongoing series on comics and comedians, it concludes with a very funny woman who began her career as the Wicked Witch of the West. Yes. Her meltdown death scene was so spectacular that the audience went absolutely wild. And she, in response, stood up and took a bow. <laughs> she has invented such wacky characters as Yolanda Perez, the gum-chewing <laughs> president of Men Menuda Fan Club, mm -hmm. Lorna May, the devoted wife of an Elvis impersonator, and Selma Bixenbaum, a grandmother who sells hot merchandise. Please welcome funny lady Susie Essman. <laughs> Girls. Nice to see you. Thank you. You too. Yeah. What is this thing, uh, the Wicked Witch of the West? How old were you when that happened? Oh, they tell you everything. everything. Oh, we get I all was the eight research. years old. I was eight. eight years old in camp, Camp Willoway. Was yeah. your mother mortified? Was she, she there? She wasn't there. She it was wasn't sleepaway there. camp. Yeah. Sleepaway camp. Yeah. She got rid of us for the summer. You is know? this what gave you the show business bug? Um, that's my first memory of having people applaud and love me to, you know. And but, you loved it. And I it. said, oh, this is a, this is yeah. a good thing. I like this. I'm going to yeah. do this. Yeah. Why did you pick stand-up comedy? I mean, because, because I'm a masochist. So, yeah, you must Linda. be. You have to be. Yeah. Um, because it's a very rewarding and difficult thing to do. Because oh, it's hard. That's it why I picked hard. it. And, but it's fun. It's, it's um, I mean, again, you, you, you're getting direct response from an audience all the time, and it's always different, and it's always challenging, and it's never the same thing every night. You, and, and, it's, and it's scary. That's why I think we it's wonder, so scary. So when we were talking, we wonder sometimes if comedians feel that it is the hardest uh, aspect of show business. I think everyone outside of stand-up yeah. comics feel when asked, would you do stand-up comedy? Oh, my, no, that would be the worst. That was a, do you feel that way, and do your colleagues feel that way, that it's the uh, scariest? Yeah, we know how hard it is. We know how brave we are. Yeah. We know that we're the most incredible people on Earth. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you have bad nights? I mean, really bad nights, where you stand up there and nobody laughs? Oh, yes, of course. Don't you want to quit? Yes, you want to quit, but then you just get up and you do it again. And, they, and then they just love you the next time. So, you know, you, it's the one half that. You are another. brave. Susie, I give you credit. as we said, um, you <clears throat> coached Sally Field right. in Punchline. Right. And that really is a great deal of what that film was about, uh -huh. how difficult a career as a stand-up comic is. What was that like for you? Well, it's interesting, because I, I think that, that Sally uh, never realized how difficult it was until she had to get up on stage and do it. And yeah. it's, it's hard. It's different than having a script and being an actor. You're out there all by yourself. But that aspect is also what makes it so powerful and wonderful. I mean, it's yours. No one else can do it. No one can take it away from you. It's just yours, and you own it. Yeah. And it's not a collaborative effort. It's just you 
and the audience. Yeah. <laughs> you lovely people out there. Are you married? No. No? No, I've never date? been married. No, I haven't dated Do in years. Do you have years. time? Really? Yeah. What yeah. about really not dating? No. What no. about men? Do you have blind dates? Well, I went on a blind date recently, and um, actually the first blind date I ever went on. But, you know, I was mortified, because the, th the thing was scary to me is the guy comes to the door, and what is he wearing when he comes to greet you? He's wearing like a, like a safari leisure suit or something, you know what I mean? And then you go to a restaurant, and you actually care what a maitre d', some person you never met before, care what he thinks about you. I wanted to go over to the maitre d' and say, my mother's friend Lois Krellenstein set me up. I don't even know this person. It's like, I apologize. Yes, like, yes. You know? It was mortifying yes. to me. No, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't dated in a while because um, you're both married? No. I am. You yeah, are. Yeah. You're not. I'm not. I think men don't understand women because I think that they're too simple and we're complicated. <laughs> don't, ladies, thank you. Oh, Do you the know men what? are clapping. Well, it's true because they know, they, you know, and it's, we love you guys, but we love you like in a patronizing way, like kind of how you love a village idiot. You know what I mean? What is that up there? Oh, oh, oh yes. no. Oh, my Hello. God. They Hello. asked us, are we going to do this? We said, no, no, it's OK. And then <laughs> you noticed his hair. Oh, my God. Isn't that God. interesting? Yeah. That is our average attitude viewer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and his he mother doesn't... likes this look. Really? But yeah. you don't want a lot of attention, which is the, the beauty <laughs> part of it. <laughs> He's but, a uh, very nice kid, and he said yeah. his mom loves his hair. Yeah. So really? We, so we said, great. Great attitude. <laughs> Thank you. So, He's young. I've gone out with younger guys. Young guys, are they, they like, you know. They were right for like an hour, then they get out of bed, then went to Bosco and watch cartoons and bore the crap out of you. But no, they said there are, you know, they could do it all night. They serve perfect. Where do you get most of your They have no idea what they're doing. Your, yes. Where do you get most of your material? Um, from my life and my family. My family's oh. a big thing. You do know, they was, hate that? No, I think they like it. It gives them a certain amount of celebrity. I guess. Yeah. You, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though it's it's. Well, I mean, like a couple of weeks ago was the Jewish holidays. I'm a Jewish girl. I know you're shocked to hear that. And um, it was Rosh Hashanah. I was with the whole family. And I don't even have to write this stuff. I just listen to them and bring a little tape recorder. My Aunt Sylvia is there telling me, you know, she was like on mood elevators or something and saying things to me like, I'm a people person. I love people. The sun comes streaming into my room in the morning. I'm up at the crack of dawn. I don't want to miss a moment. I'm full of life. I'm a doer. <laughs> I go, 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 do, do, do. I'm a doer. I said, do this, Auntie. You know, I mean, I just sit there and listen to them, and it just goes on and on and on. You've got some marvelous characters, though, including your family. Yeah. One that we loved was Yolanda Perez. Oh. Would you do a little of her for us? <laughs> the gum chewing. Right, the president of the Lisa Lisa fan club. Right, you know. Right. She is actually my ex boyfriend, who was an Italian guy, left me for her. You know, and I, I, oh, I dear. yeah, well, he yeah. was, I was in love with him because I liked the way he talked because he would call me up and say stuff like, so I'll be over your house a tree and this would turn me on, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> this is true. You know. Your mother must be it's very true. worried I, about I, you. She goes for yeah. the intellectual yeah. type. And then he left me for her and she was like 17 years old and she'd be like, you know, like, I love Lisa Lisa, you know, because like they're part of my heritage and so, right. You know, like from the South Bronx, the whole effect. Oh. And how about the... And when she, when she, when she called me a lady, she said, I really like that lady, you know, ma'am, and all that stuff. Just slap Get out of it. Yeah, yeah. How about yeah. Lorna May? Lorna May is somebody that I met um, when I was in Texas working. She's the wife of an Elvis impersonator. This is the most fascinating yeah. thing. <laughs> what an Talk about multidimensional. Yeah. The wife of an Elvis, Elvis impersonator. impersonator. Which I thought was the most pathetic thing. I thought an Elvis impersonator was pathetic, but the wife of an Elvis it's impersonator so far removed. just struck me as the most pathetic thing, you know. And she was so supportive of her husband. I would be sitting in the dressing room and she would be saying things to me like, my husband Bill is the king of the Elvis impersonators, and I help him out all the time. I sew on sequins on his suits and I lame his lame. And we was touring all through Texas, and I met Priscilla Bolet Presley, and she snubbed me. <laughs> and I know it's because she was jealous, because her king was dead and mine is alive. Oh, my God. You know? <laughs> oh, how sad, really. Yes. Is it all? Sad yet poignant all yes, at once. Yes, very poignant. But you have to be, I think, very perceptive, obviously, to, like, like any actor, to pull the essence of these of people what's funny. out yeah. and then reproduce it on stage yeah. and have a great deal of compassion. Well, I, I think you, uh, all the characters that I do, I love all the characters. I, I've never done a character that I, uh, that I feel contempt for because then it's just there's something yeah. not funny there. Yeah, yes, it gets too black. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You have yeah. to really love them and, and, and feel something about them inside of you and then you just be them. and. People are funny. People are the funniest People things. Funny. Exactly. You know, you could just, I could pick any person in this audience and there's something that's going to be hysterically funny about them. <laughs>
<laughs> Not the guy oh, with the uh -oh, hair. Forget the audience that. is all going, uh-oh. <laughs> the rest of uh -oh. the Susie, thank you for joining us. Oh, is this all we'll right? We'll keep watching. This was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. for being here. Susie Essman. Coming up next, American Indians forging new frontiers. Come back. cause very close to my heart. Five years ago, my cousin, Sharon Devine, an emergency helicopter nurse, was killed in a crash on her way to save a patient. Part of her life's work had been offering free medical care to the Pueblo Indians. At her funeral, I witnessed the devotion of hundreds of Indians who walked 40 miles to say their last goodbyes to an honored friend. Since that time, I've joined forces with the American Indian College Fund. I've seen firsthand how a college education enables Native Americans to free themselves from the hardships they face on the reservations. Joining me is a woman who fully understands the value of an Indian college education. Please welcome the president of the Cheyenne River Community College in South Dakota, Gay Kinney. Hi, Gay. Hello, Good Dave. to have you here. Thank you very much. Now, Gay, you grew up on the Cheyenne River Reservation. And you have gone on to many degrees and m higher education. How do you think you were able to accomplish and uh, overcome these obstacles yourself? Well, I have thanks for my parents who were very, um, it was always an expected that I was going to go to college. Did they go to college? No, my, my father has an eighth grade education, but my grandfather, Lala, was, um, he walked many miles, and in those days he had off-reservation schools, and he went to Hampton, Virginia. But the incentive was always there, the expectation was always there. And it was the only way we were taught that you could get ahead on the reservation, was to go to college. How does the American Indian College Fund help Indians to get to college? Well, the American Indian College Fund gets contributions from people and it's distributed among the 24 Indian colleges and then we utilize it for scholarships uh, and books or anything that the students might need because uh, the students don't have, there's no jobs, there's no other way that they can attend college. And most of them attend only on financial grants. What we'd like to talk about today, uh, what, do you, what do you think it is that makes Indian colleges unique? Well, um, any institution in the world is, has three missions or purposes, and that's to teach and to conduct research and to service the community in which they live. And on the reservation, service is one of the key most things that we do. Uh, given the population, which is poverty and isolation and uh, lack of work, unemployment's extremely high. So uh, our students need all kinds of assistance, but we end up helping the larger family in the community, which is, you know, their families and their grandparents and the aunties and uncles. And, and so like the American Indian College Fund has helped us not just with funds, but uh, we've reached out and we've joined partnerships with schools in other states. Um, we've gotten contributions of computers from different places. Books, everything. Books, you need everything. Economic libraries, you know, it's just, yes. I don't think people realize that on the reservation, uh, often the uh, college library is the only library. It is. And, on our reservation, it is. And the community center is the only community mm -hmm. center. Now, I remember the first time that we met um, last year, mm -hmm. you were talking about the women that drive 90 miles sometimes one way in a pickup truck with little yeah. kids, single mothers, to get an education. Mm -hmm. And are, the, are women uh, primarily the majority of the students that you have at the schools? Yes, and, mo and most all of the colleges, the majority are women and they're single and they all have children and uh, they have to commute many miles. But the drive the, of achieving is so great that they persist against all of these odds and um, all of them graduate. The, the statistics are very high. Why is there such a high level of unemployment on the reservations? 
in this country? Well, uh, first of all, you, in order to have employment, you have to have jobs, and there, there's no work. I mean, on my reservation, we're 100 miles from one end to the other, and there's no factories. There, there's the only, the tribe is the major employment. And we employ, like, uh, I think 360 employees. But it's mostly clerical, um, some directors, administrative. Uh, those are the jobs that are available. The other is the school system. What? Other than that, there's nothing else. Gay, okay, why is it so important for Indians to be taught within their culture? Well, uh, using myself as an example, um, who we are as Indian people is, a st is our, we find a strength in our culture and our spiritualness. And unless we have that foundation, then, um, y you know, we get lost and it leads to these societal ills such as alcoholism and um, suicides. Those things happen. It's very close to nature, isn't it? Yes. Not as scientific. Mm -hmm. We have some photos from Indian life here. Let's see what they are. We have some stills. This is very traditional headdress and wear. Mm -hmm. And we still do this now. I mean, uh, as and often as I can, I go home and we participate. And how wonderful here you have the yes. old and the new. Now, very often, the, very often, the students yes. that graduate from the American Indian Colleges go back into the reservation mm -hmm. to help their people. It's ideal because when we graduate teachers, then they teach our children. And uh, our children uh, trust them more, and you know they just start right immediately with a rapport. I think it's wonderful, too. We congratulate you because you've been just named executor, executive director of the National Congress for the American Indian. Yes. That's a one, isn't that wonderful, so. audience? So you're yeah. a prime example of those that, you know, on the reservation getting through all the obstacles. Now, we have an address for more information about American Indians. Write to Gay Kingman, acting executive director, National Congress of American Indians, 900 Pennsylvania Avenue, Southeast, Washington, D.C., 2003. You had Thank one you. thing left to say before we well, go. Well, I just would like to say that uh, we believe that the honor of one is the honor of all. And, you know, in America, we need to move forward all together. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do with the colleges. Thanks for being with us. Jay Kingman. Yeah. Linda. Next, the raviolis that are just to die for. Come back. we have a real treat. I want you to take a look at this. This is a ravioli like you have never seen before. Chef Boyardee would die to eat some of these. <laughs> now, what's truly terrific about this food is that the man behind it all is the son of a real mogul and the first woman to run for vice president. Please welcome John Saccaro, Jr., and his partner, Karen Saccone. Hi, you two. Hi, John. Thank you very much. Karen, uh, thank you for coming. Now, John, mm -hmm. you're into the ravioli business. I mean, what's your mom think about all that? His mother, of course, is Geraldine Ferraro. Oh, she thinks it's wonderful. Does she? Yeah. She's happy about it. Did she teach you how to cook? Um, she's a wonderful cook. Uh, I, I know that, She yeah. doesn't spend much time in the kitchen, but she, uh, she's taught us a lot. Yeah, but you guys went to cooking school together. Right. Right? How'd you come up with this idea, Karen? Uh, my mother-in-law had a ravioli store in Kansas City for a long, long time. Ah. And uh, she does the more traditional pasta. Right. And yeah. John and I got together and just took a twist off on it. You certainly did. Yeah. Pumpkin ravioli. Pumpkin ravioli. The Italians in this audience are just, it's right to the heart, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? That's All so right, my mother would be dying right now. All right, let's go through and see what we have. Now, tell me what all of this is. Look at these colors in here. Okay, you have a uh, tomato be basil fettuccine right there. Right here. Um, that is a beet angel hair pasta. That is your red pepper um, angel hair. That is your um, linguine squid ink. Strange, John. Ah, that's a little lovely strange. Lovely color. What's that? Spinach? And that's your spinach. And, and what's that? And that's your uh, black pepper. Black pepper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, at your store, you obviously make homemade pasta, and, and you specialize in homemade ravioli. Yes. With all sorts of mm -hmm. stuff on it. Mm -hmm. Want to help me? Surely. Here, let's try some of these. Karen, what do you like Karen, go ahead. Jump in. Don't be Now, shy. what is this one I'm eating over here, that's John? That's a broccoli, pepperoni, and mozzarella. Broccoli, pepperoni, and mozzarella. Or pizza ravioli. Huh? 
Oh, it's good. Good. <laughs> it's good. Okay. Now, John, where's this black thing? Uh, <laughs> that's a squid ink uh, pasta filled with a lobster mousse. Not sure. I have trouble getting past the top part right, of this. Just close your eyes and eat it. It hasn't been sitting out there Is that this long. a big order for you, this one? Um, yeah, we do it a lot, actually. Really? Who's your customer? Um, we have all different kinds of restaurants, gourmet shops, and uh, health food places. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I think it's going to be black, you know, like licorice <laughs> gum. <laughs> no, it's not. Like a big it, chocolate. It actually doesn't taste that strange. All right. Now, uh, what's this one? That's oh, isn't this a fun <laughs> segment? <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. your, that's your pumpkin. Pumpkin. That's what we're going to make today. Yes, that's yes. the one. We're All right. Make. Let's see what, how we're going to make it. Go ahead, Karen. Let, show us what you're going to do. Uh, for the filling, you want to take <laughs> pumpkin puree. Uh, you can use fresh pumpkin, or you can use uh, pumpkin puree that's canned pumpkin puree. We use a mixture of both because the machinery has to have a certain thickness. Right. So you take your pumpkin puree. Hopefully it'll jump. Pumpkin. In. How would you come up with something like this? Actually, uh, pumpkin is very Italian. They do a zucca, a tortellini di zucca, and a few other things in Italy, and. Uh, it's a holiday item. It's wonderful. It's holiday. Yeah, good Thanksgiving item. Mm -hmm. uh, a little pecan. Mm. I'll go with the one. Mm -hmm. That is a Mama Sacconi recipe. That's oh, it is. Yes, yes, secret. Mama this one. Yes, that one right there. That's our traditional one. Oh, that's good. Now, see, that's recognizable to me. <laughs> that's like a, a like a ravioli, like we know a ravioli. And she's putting in the pecan cider honey. And, uh, Apple you, cider honey and pecans and butter and a little cream. Now we, right. we add the, um, the bulk items first so you can judge how runny it's going to be. Okay. If, if you put your eggs and your butter and your cream in, then it could be too runny. Now, you guys have been in business, what, six months? Yeah. And right. you're selling out like crazy. Yeah, yeah it's going really well. really well. Who, who buys all this? Uh, I mean, we have all different kinds of uh, clientele from your, um, you know, your Wall Street people to actually, um, you To know, the guys the, on the Bowery, the yeah. mission. That really? Next door come to in. Us. I yeah. need a few black ravioli. And <laughs> uh, not go everyone. With my does. outfit. I, you know. <laughs> no. All right. Now, um, do you, are you going to branch out? Are you going to open up a, a, a restaurant with all kinds of stuff in it? You know, so I just keep eating. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, I don't think uh, we're going to open a restaurant right away. I think we're going to branch out to California. And, Are uh, you? Karen has a great friend in Reno that we've been talking to. And uh, we've been uh, looking for uh, other ways to expand. Now, you guys met in this cooking school, mm -hmm. and you decided to start this business. You, uh, you get along? I mean, who does what? Do you sample the recipes together? Uh, we do everything, yeah, All, well, both of us. And you do the cooking, John. Yeah, a lot of it. John, your mother would be so proud of you, wouldn't she? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's really a lot of fun. We sit down and uh, come up with about 10 or 12 recipes each, and then we try them and um, fight over them. Any of them ones. not work? Do you ever make Lots something that was that really work. awful, oh, awful? Sure. Like we, what? Um, we made a, well, actually, we got a cream sauce. We were looking at cream sauces, and we got a recipe from a friend of mine, and it came out, uh, it was really bad. Yeah, we could have spackled. spackled the roof or the ceiling. Really? <laughs> could have been a new so joint compound. So the way compound. D cooks. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay, now what do we do? That's I'll just great. taste this. Now that's a filling. Oh, that's good. That's sweet. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks now what? Now, now, now you take it. your sheets. And you put them on there. You have to flour that um, flour ramekin so it doesn't stick. Now this is this is spinach. This yes, is spinach right? stuff. And this is homemade pasta. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We Store do everything. Made. Homemade. Okay. How how much does it cost to buy like a dozen ravioli? Well, it depends. Um, our retail prices range anywhere from four dollars to seven dollars a pound, which serves two people. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cheaper than going to a restaurant, everybody. You know. What are the four dollar ones? The black um, ones? No, the, <laughs> no, actually they're That's one of the our more expensive. Ones. Are they? Yeah. Well, I could just skip that. <laughs> no, the ricotta is uh, one of the cheaper ones. Good. And then we have a spinach and mozzarella. That's right. a cheaper one too. Does any Italians ever come in and say, "What? What is this? Well, what, we are, what are you doing?" We have a few yeah. ladies in the neighborhood we make uh, sheets for. Uh, one lady has a bad back, and we roll out the sheets for. her. And she does her own. Yeah, she her own insides. Herself. Yeah. Of course. And then we have a few people, like the crossing guards and some other people, that keep needling us. When are we going to make regular ravioli? Okay. Of course. But You're in New York, John. That's it. They don't understand this. So it's, it's been working out well, and we do do uh, all different kinds. Those now, what butters. is this? Show everybody. Can you see this? While, while Karen is busy making raviolis, this is all the butters that they make for sauces, I guess, on this, yeah, right? Yeah, we make um, a special sauce uh, once a week. This is what this was. It was a um, clo uh, clove cream with Armagnac. Okay. And we do those different sauces daily, and then we have butters which go with each ravioli. Mm. For from chai That's butter. good. That's sort of like uh, eggnog. Yeah, without the alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Odd. Okay. <laughs> okay, Karen, great. how you doing? Good, I think. 
She's full. These have dried muscle. out just a tad. How many of these do you make in a day? Four hundred. Yeah, about four or five hundred pounds. Should we get sick of it? Not yet. No, no. not really. Not yet. We we'll get to change them when we get. Yeah, when we do, we just change the menu. Okay. What's your mother's favorite? Um, I think she likes the um the mushroom. Does she? And we had the. Um, I'll the... call her later. I'll see That's if you're sure. lying. No, <laughs> actually, we had the um the artichoke and gorgonzola at my sister's wedding. She oh, you that. did. Yeah. Oh, nice. Now you're gonna throw this in water. And cook it, and that's it, and you throw sauce on it. Yeah. Real simple, it's very real simple. fresh. Mm -hmm. Well, I g wish you great luck, Thank both you very of much. you. It sounds like you've got a winner here. Huh. John Zaccaro and his partner, Karen. Thank you very much. All right, say hi to your mom. I will. I will. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Well done. Beautiful. See? Beautiful. A real blast from Linda's past. Who is it? Stay tuned. Picture this, a lovely young model. You know her well. She's led a really interesting life. She begged Tom Selleck to slap her. <laughs> she starved herself so severely to maintain her model's slimness that she developed an eating disorder. And she's the gutsiest, most loving person I know. Oh, yes, in case you couldn't recognize her beautiful face underneath all that heavy 60s makeup, <laughs> there she is. It's that. our own Linda Dano. <laughs> <laughs> and here to join us today is the modeling agent who discovered her, the renowned Nina Blanchard. Oh, Thank you. Yes. Welcome, ladies, to Attitudes. <laughs> Thank you. I get to be interviewed. You see, All right. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask Nina first. Oh, boy. Here not to differ. How did you discover <laughs> Linda Dano, or Linda Peck, as she was called at that time? How did it come about? As I recall, she, and we have to remember this is a few, few years, years ago. Few years ago, just a few. <laughs> Please, Nina, don't date us both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're still here, honey. Yeah, don't knock us. Yeah, we're still here. That's true. Uh, <laughs> we, she was came with somebody else, as I remember, Jeanette. to my office. And uh, I came outside. I mean, the office was, you know, the size of that fishbowl. And I came outside. We did have an ante room, though. And I saw her. How can you miss those blue eyes? I know. I said, who? And wasn't the other girl going there to get a model? Yes, job? I was just. She just dragged support. you with her. Right. Yeah, I just. Went Isn't that support. funny? Is that yeah. can yeah. you be discovered yeah. like Lana Turner and the? And she said to me, which was really funny. She called me in, and I was so nervous about my friend Jeanette because Jeanette really wanted to be a model, and I, I was a, a painter. You know, I was going to be a, a designer, and you said to me, go home and take some pictures, just, you know, with any camera. And I literally went home with my mother's brownie mm -hmm. in the backyard. Remember those That's awful all pictures? <laughs> and I came back and I showed them to her and she said, boy, these are awful. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, but I, I think you have potential. Yes. And she signed? Me. Good bones. Did, Good bones. That's, isn't that true? Now, isn't that true of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s? Are bones still as prevalent today? Well, yeah, it's the shape of the skull, really, that makes you photogenic. Really? Oh, yes. I didn't know that. You never told me that. I'm not going to tell you any secrets. Yeah, that's true. Well, we've got some old modeling stills, and we're going to oh, see the shape Lord. of this girl's skull. Let's look at it. Oh, wow. Isn't that pretty? Now, what year was this, Lynn? Oh, Lord. <clears throat> About 62, maybe? Mm -hmm. Something 1962. Mm -hmm. And that was when they shot up, yeah, you know, they did for that those whole 60s. Wide yeah, thing, you know. About the I look makeup, like, honey. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this one. Are you lying down here, or no, are you just leaning? I'm just against a wall. I remember when this was taken. Yeah. That 700 hasn't pounds changed a of bit. eyeshadow. Yeah, and, and that bald was the lashes, lashes for lashes days. Were just when you blinked, they stuck together. Stuck on your and eyes. then you had to pull them open. <laughs> yeah. Now, on a more serious note, yes. during that, oh, wait a second, before we go any further, here's oh, another one. Look a, at that. Is that gorgeous? That? It is so natural looking. Doesn't it? Look how, we, look how far we've come. Yes. Thank God. I, I remember these poses, you know, in the magazines. <laughs> sure. When the, yeah. the girl leaning over, kind of twiggy esque. Oh, Lord. Now, as I said before, on a more serious note, Nina, did you have any idea when you were working with Linda that there was the possibility that she had an eating disorder from trying to stay thin? Do you know until this minute I didn't know it? Yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone, no one knew. No one even your knew. closest friends no. at that time, no one knew. knew. No one knew. My mother never knew. You suffered from bulimia. Bulimia. Yeah. bulimia. Yeah. And for many I'm, years. For people who don't know what that is, it is an eating disorder where you can eat what you mm -hmm. want. But feeling that you're overweight yeah. or whatever, you 
make yourself yeah. vomit and regurgitate the food so you do not gain weight. Mm -hmm. And this went on for years and years. years, and years, and years. Now, is that prevalent among models? No. I have had girls that, in the agency that have had it. I've had models staying at my house that have had it. And we had a girl that stayed there for a while. And she always wanted to stay in the guest room near the kitchen. Oh, see. And I thought, yeah. wow. How odd. She ate a big bear. Yeah. Then I'd go upstairs, and then the housekeeper said, I don't understand where the food's going. Yeah. It was a dozen eggs, a pound of bacon, a quart of ice oh, cream after the dinner. Yeah. Yeah. After the dinner. Yeah. Here we have a, just another still here. How much did you weigh here? That's very. I was very thin. I I I probably I was like a size four, and I yeah. I weighed probably 108, 107 pounds, something like that. Well, those are. And you know, in those days, I, and I suppose it's true now too of models. It's not as no. much, is it? Because in those days, you you, you really thought you had to be just you thought you a had stick. To be. But you had you to really be a stick. Didn't have yeah. To be. yeah. Now, tell us, you were a contract player at yeah, 20th yeah. Century Fox. Yeah. Yeah. Did Tom Selleck really hit you? Oh yes. Oh yeah. How did but that I, happen? But I made him do it. We we had just gone under contract, and and they threw us into a uh, this show. They had all the contract players do this show for all the executives at right. the, at the studio. And you were Xanax. No, no, and no, I wasn't. But no. you remember? And, and of course. And, yeah. And I and I said to Tom, they threw us together in a scene, and and it was a scene where he had to slap me, and mm -hmm. I said, and Tom and I had become such close friends because we were both. So oh, terrified, always oh, so, so wonderful. And I said, please, Tom, please hit me. Hit me as hard as you can, because if you hit me very hard, I'll cry. <laughs> and then they'll think I'm really a good actor. Well, he gave me a shot that he came down from the floor. And Tom is like 6'4", as you all know. He gave me a shot. I landed into a flat of a set and knocked it over. <laughs> but the wall. I cried. <laughs> I had his handprint yeah. on my face for three hours. He was so guilty oh, he's about this. Oh. Sure. oh, yeah. Oh, God. That's such a cute story. Is that a I, funny story? You'll probably hear yeah, about this. Yeah, hear that I told it. Nina, it, did Linda, was Linda the same as she is today primarily? What kind of person was she in her, at 20, when you met her? Well, you know, I will tell you that when she came in, I think the most important thing other than, you know, I mean, you have girls that come in that are beautiful, but there's nothing at home up here, you know, at all. She was alive and she had energy. Yeah. And energy is the key for acting, commercials, even more than in modeling. But you've got to have the energy because without it, you know, you're cardboard. Yeah. And she had that a vivaciousness about her. That she still has today. Oh, like, she know. drives me into the ground. I'm telling you, and I'm thir exactly 13 years same. younger. How long since I've seen you? Long time. Long time. But you have not changed. Truly. You haven't you changed have either, not. which oh, is so... Stop you it. Haven't. You ha I used to be so afraid of you. Oh, no. <gasps> I was, because you were like Nina Blanchard. You're so famous. You've I been mean, with really, every beautiful woman in the world. Really. I you never have. I understood that. I know. I'm okay, the you did it. I'm the nicest sure. yes, person is. that ever walked. Well, yeah. we can attest to that. And yeah. thank you for being on Attitudes. Thanks. Nina Thanks. Blanchard, everybody. Thank Nina, thank you. It's nice thank to you meet you. Really. And Linda, coming up next, part four of our series Find Out What's Hot. <laughs> we've been telling you what's hot. Everything from race car driving to restaurants. What you do with that information, <laughs> you do. Don't worry about it. Well, you don't have to follow any of it. It's really fun to find out what the latest trends are. Yeah. But what's really hot is knowing your own style and what's right for you. That's right. We agree that's with right. that. We absolutely agree with now, that. Now, so. what else have they told us that's hot right. now that we should know about? The first thing we're going to talk about is Romeo Gigli. Now, he's a designer, and there he is, some of his clothes, that is really hot right now. In fact, he's so hot, he just got some press that came out, I think today or yesterday, that wasn't exactly great press, but he's in the press, and that's the key. He is hot. Okay? okay. The other thing that's very hot now is exercise Go for it, equipment. Dee. But it's not I'll watch. the, the Stairmaster <laughs> um, is very big at health clubs and stuff like that, but free weights are in. Are you getting this, guys? 
This is about six pounds, and this is about 18 pounds or 16 pounds. It's free weights. I use them at home, actually. I don't use 16 pounds to curl. <laughs> but for your pecs, girls, this is the only way to go. It's very good. Very good for keeping the chest Put young. Put that down, Dane. We'll come and eat. Whatever. <laughs> OK. Yeah. So free weights are in. Oh, yes. And Stare master machine. John Kennedy. Oh, right. John Kennedy. Oh. Junior. I met Junior. him at a party one night. Did you? Yes, I did. Yes, at the and? Temple of Dendur, and boy, was he handsome. Ooh. This is a 1988 yeah. magazine cover we're seeing here, yeah. but it just goes to show you that John Kennedy Jr. is still very hot. hot. Very hot. Okay. Now, you see this, this little pillow here, it says, uh, you can't be too rich or too thin. Well, this is sort of a double whammy, because needlepoint is very big, very hot, but being too thin is no longer hot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you don't have to be too thin anymore. Really Health is the, the, the key thing, and exercise, and looking good, and not looking and anorexic. And feeling good. And feeling good. And so, feeling good. Too thin, that old thing is gone. Forget it. OK. Now, what else is in? We, we told you about kids' names uh, are very in. And two of them are Emily and Zachary for little boys. And these are two items we have here. Here we have Zachary on a little dinosaur and Emily. So they're very, very popular names for children, okay. hot names for kids. The new hot model is Gabrielle Reese. She's it. There she is. On she the is beautiful, magazine. too. Yeah. And see, she's healthy. She's, she's fresh six looking. foot one. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. OK, that's the hot model. And what do we have here? American cooking is in. And that's not just. Uh, Cajun or uh, ethnic cooking in New York, but it's American cooking across the boards. This particular dish is from the Shakers in Pennsylvania. It's chicken with dumplings. And we have some dumplings. And you this can is, have that. This is from Miss Ruby's American Cooking. Right. Oh, that's good. Oh, that is good. Let's try it. Yeah. I'll, I'll try Boy, some chicken. Boy, we love chicken. to eat on this show. No, thank God being thin is not absolutely <laughs> in. OK. Delicious. Mm. This very is good. very good. Terrific. Okay. Miss Ruby's. No. OK. Dinosaurs. They're everywhere. They're hot. They're, they're They've thin. been hot for a long time for kids. You know, and you, all your children want These them. are dinosaur stamps. Yes. And that really tells you that a USA stamp with dinosaurs on it, dinosaurs have got to be hot. Right. And no pun intended, they've just found some evidence that dinosaurs may have, in fact, been hot-blooded animals rather than cold-blooded cold. animals. We don't know what you're going to do with that information, no. No. but we I have to give you up yeah. to the minute. I right here on come up a lot. No, at a cocktail party? Maybe. OK. You know. OK. Now, we have some predictions. <laughs> Opera. You just whip this to together, right? Hot. That's my voice. Should she just put this down right That's before cool. we came? Uh, Bob Mackie is doing costumes for the opera now, as several designers are. Uh, opera is an elegant evening out. We're all going back to elegance. That's right. So opera is hot. That's what we predict. That's good. Now, if for a vacation spot, guess where it is? Montana. That's right. The new and make spot. your reservations now, everybody. They're snowboarding right there. No. This is going to be the biggest new vacation spot for winter skiing and summer, too. That's right. And I, I, our producer big. told us big. when we did this <coughs> that everyone were, people were mad at her for giving away their best kept secret because yeah. Montana is the most fabulous Frank vacation spot. Frank went there spot. last year. He went snowmobiling, and he loved it. Now, in fashion, the new hot thing we predict is called the slouch. Uh, Giorgio Armani has done a whole new collection this fall, and it's not just a slouch jacket, you know, which is kind of loose and over the shoulder, but it's a slouch everywhere. Sort of easy, loose, l shirts out, great. How, how do you feel about less shoulder pads? I'm not talking about that. I know, you didn't. <laughs> she I'm left that out. About, I left it out. I refuse to accept it. It's part of the slouch. Shoulder pads are hot. I don't care what they tell you. Well, you can be shoulder padded or not now. Isn't that true? That's true. Now, That's true. what is the hottest talk show ever? What do you think, audience? What's the prediction? What do you think it could be? The hottest television show. Attitude. Well, it That's took right. long enough. This is our last prediction. Okay. Attitude will be the hottest talk show ever. That's right. There we are.
Okay, those are your predictions. Those are the things that are hot all week. We'll go next week and give you all new ones because that's, that's right. how long they last. And you heard it first on Attitude. Stay yes. with us. We'll be right we'll back. Be right back. telling me that there are how many colleges, Indian colleges in the United States? There are 24 American Indian tribal colleges in the United States. I think everybody's surprised when they hear that. Yeah, I and didn't anybody think there can was go that to them. many. Anybody yeah. can go to them. They're accredited schools. There are yeah. 24 in the United States and two in Canada. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah and I, I know that means so much to you. It does. Yeah. She and was a very nice lady. She's very interesting and yeah. she's got a very big position now in Washington and she's worked very hard for the Native Americans and uh, she's great and she's fun too and her mother loves attitudes. So she watches? Yeah, her mother watches attitudes all the time. Isn't that great? Yeah. And she watches it too so it was, it's really fun. We have attitudes fans, American Indians, all yeah. kinds of people watch attitudes. Right? Right. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Um, I don't know. I think we should what are you well, going to do, Linda? We actually, we have, they're going to let us put this up one more time. Oh, How nice. If you want more information about American Indian colleges or anything, call Gay Kingman or write to her, Acting Executive Director, National Congress of American Indians, 900 Pennsylvania Avenue, Southeast, Washington, D.C. The zip code is 20003. Good. Good. Maybe we'll do some good. Thanks, here. gang. Yeah. Thanks, nice. Lynn. Thanks, Dean. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, we help each other out. <laughs> oh, you wanted to talk more? Oh, no. We OK, can. we can say goodbye now. You want to say right. goodbye? Yeah, we'll say goodbye. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. To receive Lifetime's Attitudes Tip Sheet with information on today's show, call 1-900-773-4040. Today's show and issue number is 6. The cost of the call and tip sheet is $2. To avoid ordering duplicate tip sheets, please check your issue number before placing the call. If you would like tickets, please send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Attitudes Tickets, 3412 36th Street, Astoria, New York, 11106. Or give us a call at area code 718-706-3575. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. 2 Central, check out the latest line from the golden girl of the fashion world. Host Linda Dano and D. Kelly step out with designer Donna Karen on Attitudes. Coming up on the Lifetime Afternoon movie, an honest cop becomes a political pawn when he's caught in a web of corruption spun by federal agents. Ben Gazzara and Paul Sorvino star in the epic drama A Question of Honor. Next.